We're here talking to three association leaders. We thought it was a good time after almost a year of the COVID situation uh, to get some uh, some leaders of organizations in North America together uh, just to talk about uh, where we are and where things might be going. We have Jim Delahaye uh, from the Eastern United States Pipe Band Association. He's the president. Uh, Graham Davidson from the British Columbia Pipers Association and Jim Sim from the Midwest Pipe Band Association. Thanks a lot, guys, for taking the time to uh, to talk today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so, you know, where to begin? It's uh, It's been a crazy year for, for associations. And, you know, you know, after a year almost of, of, of uh, no in-person events, uh, what are your general thoughts on where you are as an organization? Maybe talk, talk with uh, you, Jim Delay. Well, I think uh, when all this went down, uh, everything that we had in the hopper, so to speak, kind of went out the window and we sort of went back to the drawing board and thought about what we could possibly do for the members. And obviously, since there had been a history of online or virtual contests out there, we jumped at the chance to try to learn everything we could about running those contests. And I think over the course of the season, we were able to run 14 of them, which I think is probably the most out there um, amongst the associations. And they were very well attended from people all over the world. Um, we had uh, people from other associations that were asking us all the time how they could join up because they were wanting to go play, um, just like our people. And I think one of our events in um, the earlier uh, months uh, out of Ohio, we had somewhere in the ballpark of 750 some odd um, events, uh, as in a registration, uh, like a, a March to Spain Real. So some people were able to register four and five events and uh, the entry was just massive, but far larger than we ever expected. Um, but that's been a great thing. Uh, the participation from uh, our association has been pretty broad. Uh, people that we never thought would be able to, to do these things, um, they've been able to come out all the time. Uh, some people are able to play two contests on the same weekend, uh, which is unheard of. So uh, it's been nice to be able to provide those opportunities for these people um, who pay their, their dues to us and, and put their trust in us. So I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear. Uh, you know, Graham Davidson, uh, you're newly elected uh, only in the last month or so with the British Columbia Pipers Association and your predecessor, Robert Rob McNeil. Uh, I know that BCPA was doing a lot of things early on, uh, reacted quickly to the situation in, I believe, in February even, um, putting some things on hold and, and really looking to kind of reinvent your approach. Uh, what are you what are you coming into? What do you find yourself coming into after almost a year of uh, the COVID-19 situation? Well, it was very hard for the previous board. And I, you know, when I heard that they canceled the annual gathering, which is our big event, um, I gave them kudos because who knew what this was going to turn out to look like. But they, um, the, the previous board reached out to the membership pretty quickly and and offered online competitions send in your video and be assessed uh it wasn't like a contest just an assessment and we'd have they they lined up three or four judges per event and you, you then you would get feedback from all these judges and and you know and you know the judges after the event got together and we were allowed to talk about the good and the bad and the ugly of holding the event itself. And we all were thumbs up on how well it was organized and run. And it was really nice to play back a video and listen to it two or three times. And, and we could actually read each other's comments in the big spreadsheet that was performed that we had to fill out and, and you go, oh, they said that and go back and, oh, yeah, you know, and it, it was really interesting to learn how other judges were looking at the event. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the association has also reached out to the Highland Games and the membership, and we're just trying to still do things for them. Yeah, uh, Jim Sim, uh, you know, the Midwest Pipe Band Association, you were, I, I guess, you know, uh, been seen as kind of innovators already. Uh, so when this kind of situation hit, uh, how did how did the Midwest Association uh, react to it? 
The first one that hit, we have our regional contests all throughout the Midwest for our qualifier for our day of piping, which is usually held in May, the first Saturday in May. So that was the one that, that took the hit right at the start. And then, of course, like everybody else, the game started to fall by the wayside as time went on. Um, so we also held an online contest, but it just seems like, I don't know, like the, the fashion fad of the day, everybody was having them. So we had the one. Um, and with that, we have a scholarship, um, scholarships that we have, the Irwin Scholarship, which provides three scholarships for the top three in our grade four junior, and then three scholarships for our uh, top players in grade three that are all under the age of 18. Um, so we're able to do that through our online contest, and we have a list of adjudicators that, and um, instructors that have agreed to provide lessons for our, um, our winners. And uh, so this year we had uh, Willie McCallum and Ken Eller provide, if you win first place, you get four one hour lessons, second is three hours and, and third is two hours. So we had six youngsters were able to take advantage of that. Um, so I was glad at least we got that out. Um, and we'll be expanding that actually this year or I should say next year in 2021, we're gonna expand that into the drumming realm as well with the exact same setup. So I was really glad to get that part in um, we, of course, had our AGM virtually like everybody has. Um, and then we are now in the process of running a series of interviews. We interviewed Ken Eller, Reed Maxwell, and just this week we put out the interview with Jack Lee. And we're trying to gear those interviews, not just what they've accomplished or that kind of thing, but it's educational tips, what they look for in a band performance or a solo performance, how you can improve your playing, things like that uh, from the best. So um, we're in the process of doing that now. Um, we're also uh, just last night we had a board meeting and we're about to put out a survey to the bands to see where they feel where they might be if there is contests hopefully there will be this summer um, in regards to the music playing requirements we're talking about things like maybe only one msr in grade two instead of two or just the msr or just the medley in grade three that kind of thing for at least the first half of the year so the bands aren't behind the eight ball right at the start um, to see how they feel about that. So we're in the process of getting that out there. And much like uh, what Jim said, we also have extended anybody who registered as a band or a solo individual member for 2020, that membership will carry over to 2021 with no, other, no additional fees. So uh, we feel we're in a position we can do that. So we did that as well. Hmm. That's uh, inter interesting initiatives there. And, you know, all three of you are really accomplished players. Uh, you kind of come into it with that perspective of, of having, uh, I guess, walk the talk. Um, you know, some of the, uh, the learnings over the last nine months, uh, you know, what, what have, have the last nine months taught you uh, as leaders for going forward? Um, you know, assuming that you know, at least for a, a large part of 2021, we're going to be in the same kind of situation. Uh, Graham, any any kind of observations that uh, that that you've learned over the last while? I think the main thing I learned is how much I miss everybody, not just the music. Um, you know, I teach downstairs in this room where I was. Now I'm doing Skype, but just missing everybody, missing all the, all the, the laughs and, and handshakes and the beers and the tent and, and, and putting your name on the bottom of the score sheet, miss all that. Um, but, you know, we're, 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 we're trying to move forward and, and keeping everybody involved. Um, we're moving forward with our, our mini gathering in February. That's for all our amateur players. And we're talking about doing the grade one piping and drumming live, but they would have to still record their uh, performance and then send it in and the actual recording would be what would be judged. And then we're hoping to expand that and run our indoor meet um, at the Easter break and do the same thing for the pros, run it live, but then they would have to record and send that in to be judged. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure what we can do for the bands at this time. Um, that's a real tough one. Um, I, I, I feel for all the bands everywhere. Um, so 
but for the indoor, we're looking at, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see what kind of entry we get, you know, because in past, you sort of had to be here and perform. So it was basically, you know, the BC Pipers, you know, players that would perform, you would get the odd person from out of town, but now it could open it up to anybody. Yeah. The, uh, you know, on that note, the EUSPBA, uh, you know, the, your, the activities uh, that you've talked about, Jim, um, do you see the EUSPBA, you know, an opportunity that you've learned over the last year to become more international? And I guess this question kind of applies to all three organizations. Is it, is it now opened up, you know, a little bit more where we can do some of these things ongoing, whether in person or, or on, on the net? I, I think it's, uh, you're right on target with that. Um, because we have seen such an influx of international players in our solo contest, uh, it sort of begs the question, why not? Um, but going back to a point you mentioned earlier about what did we learn, uh, we learned something every time we ran a contest. And I think the most important thing that we that came to the forefront was having great volunteers in places uh, of need. Um, our executive committee, uh, dozens of hours a week, uh, the, the contest organizers. Uh, I can't even say enough about those people who, who were volunteering to run these contests and put in the hours that they did. Uh, one of them, Stephanie Valley, said she didn't sleep for a day and a half and had to take off of work to get all the work done, and she did it all of herself. So, you know, th that, that's incredible to, to see the, the, the commitment to, to the art um, that some of these people have put in um, over the course of the last six to nine months. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I do see the, the international uh, flavor here just from this past year. Um, we've seen a lot of people from, on can or from Canada, Ontario, the Maritimes, they've all uh, jumped in on some of these online contests, virtual contests, uh, people from all over the world. So like I mentioned earlier, it's kind of a neat, uh, neat byproduct of all of this, but I uh, wish it was under different circumstances. That's for sure. Yeah, of course. You know, and uh, you know, Jim said the Midwest uh, Association, you had a uh, you know, great momentum going with the Chicago Highland Games uh, for bands. You know, uh, 2019, uh, I think 2020, you were expecting even more, uh, becoming, you know, one of the biggest grade two, grade three events uh, in North America. Um, how do you see uh, the momentum sustaining for, for something like the Chicago Highland Games? Well, um, I was actually out at the site about a month ago with uh, the people from the games. Uh, there's been some additional construction, but we are going to the commitment was made to run it at the same location uh, the third Saturday in June again. So um, they did make that commitment. On the other side of the coin, um, we were the, the largest grade two contest in North America um, in 2018 and 2019. Um, we had 50 band performances in 2019. So it really grew. Bands were in grades two and three were able to play both their selections. They played twice and they played their medley in a concert formation, which was something completely different. Um, but the other, for those of you who don't know, the Chicago games are run by the Illinois St. Andrews Society and the largest, it's the oldest charity in the state of Illinois. And their main charitable mission is running uh, the Scottish home and the Caledonia senior living. It's a dementia care. And when I was a kid, they called it the Scottish old people's home. I reserved a room there, so I'm all set to go. But um, so they, of course, have come under a huge financial crunch this year with the COVID with all the testing and, and thing and, and knock on wood, they haven't had one COVID case at the Scottish home. So, but financially they've taken a huge hit. Um, they weren't able to run their largest fundraiser this year in November, the Feast of the Haggis, but um, they did commit um, to having the games. I don't know if the bands will be ready. I think we inevitably, we probably will lose some momentum in 2020. But um, going forward, um, we had some really great ideas for 2020, both with bands and um, with adjudicators. Um, we were going in 2020, the commitment was made. We, have, we had eight adjudicators in 2019. And for some reason, um, blame me, we still kept it to the two piping, one ensemble and one drumming. And we had people on the sidelines not doing anything for we would rotate the judges throughout the day so in 2020 uh, we made the commitment that we were going to have all eight judges judge all the grade two and three events so we'd have four piper piping judges two ensemble and two drumming 
uh, just to try it, just to see something different, why not? So I don't know if we'll do that in 2021, um, again, based on finances, but I would hope by at least 2022, that would be the goal again, but hopefully we can do it in 2021. Um, but the commitment is still there to, to have a top-notch contest for the bands.